Hi everybody, it's Maria from Cardbomb.com. Thanks for joining me. Today I will be creating for Tonic Studios using the Mermaid with Love die range to create some sparkly shimmering cards. Before we get started, I'd like to talk a little bit about these dies because they are gorgeous. There are some smaller sets that I'm showing you now that accompany two larger sets that have quite a few dies. This is the first of those two large sets and this one is called the Oceana Layering Die Set. It's got seven circular um, dies and two that can be a corner piece. And this is the second of the two sets and this one is the Marina Layering Die Set and this one is my favorite. I love all the shells in this and um, I was really surprised at the versatility of, this, of these dies because I've never used anything quite like these. There are a series of fancy intricate um, dies and each one of those has what I'm calling a cutting ring around the fancy layer. So you can cut every single fancy layer out with those cutting rings and you can also cut the inside of the fancy layers out with those cutting rings. You can skip using the cutting rings to die cut the design straight into your cardstock or use only the outer ring to get a fancy circle like that one. If you use both of the cutting rings, you'll end up with a fancy detailed circle like that one that I just placed down in the top left corner. You can also achieve really different looks with these dies just by choosing to remove different parts of the negative space from the die cuts. So on this piece, I've removed no negative space, and this is the exact same die cut with the center removed and all of the negative space removed as well, and you can see how different it looks. Another great thing about these dies is that the cutting rings cut the perfect size circles to layer with the coordinating pieces. So whether you choose to use the cutting rings with your detailed dies or not, they will match perfectly. Now let's take a quick look at the four dies that are part of this Mermaid to be Loved die range. Each of these dies have a really fun sentiment and three of them also have a silhouette background as shown here on the Mermaid Kisses and Starfish Wishes. So that silhouette background comes in all of these sets except for the Make a Splash set. So I haven't included in it, it here on the Mermaid to be Friends, but what I have done is left some of the negative pieces in on the shelves to show you how you can make them a little bit more substantial by leaving pieces in. This is the Make a Splash set, and that is the only one that does not have a silhouette background. I do love the font on that one, though. Now these seashells and sea stars are part of that larger marina layering die set. So it's that piece and that piece right there, and they cut out just beautifully. And you can use those for corner pieces, you can use them on top of a circle. Depending on how you choose to decorate these die cuts, you can really create some different and fun looks as I have here. Now let's get on to today's project. All the measurements for these pieces are gonna be on the blog, so be sure to check back there for more details. But this is watercolor paper that I'm gonna be starting out with, and I'm using my Nouveau Aquaflow pens in Aqua Splash, True Turquoise, Indigo Dawn, and Azure Blue. I'm starting out by putting a lot of clean water onto both of my watercolor pieces. I decided to do these both at the same time because I'm using the same colors on both pieces. However, I'm gonna be making that smaller piece a lot less saturated than I am going to be doing the larger piece. So I'm starting out with Aqua Splash, and you can see that that color is very light when it's watered down. But that's what I really want for that smaller piece. On the larger piece, I'm working in layers. So I'm intentionally going lighter right now because I'm gonna build layer after layer after layer and end up with a really nice depth of color by the time that I'm done. I also wanna point out that I'm intentionally moving from side to side with my brush strokes. I'm not trying to place colors in any specific places. I'm not trying to do darker at the bottom for depth of the ocean or anything like that. I just wanna have side to side brush, brush strokes um, for a really smooth look. So as I'm starting to add more colors on that larger piece, you can see that I'm getting now uh, more depth of color and the color is becoming more bold. I decided that the smaller piece was as dark as I wanted it to be and so I put that off to the side to dry. I do always like to let my watercolor pieces dry naturally whenever possible. You can hit yours with a heat tool if you like, but you have to be careful of warping. And if you have a lot of water on your page, you have to make sure that you're not blowing the water around and getting um, dribbles in your page, if you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes the water starts running around and as you chase it with your heat tool, it dries in runs on your page. I really want to have a smooth look for this with all the colors blended together, so I'm gonna be letting mine dry. I'm now getting into adding a little bit more bold color, 
and if you notice I do continually add water to my paper and water was starting to come off the edges of my paper so I decided to put a paper towel underneath my cardstock to help absorb some of that water. You can see that I've been mixing some of my colors off to the side to achieve new colors that blend really well with the colors that I've already laid down and I'm using those colors a little more heavily saturated and dabbing them in to add some texture to my background and I'm really starting to like the way that it looks. So I'm gonna let it dry off to the side and here it is dried like magic. I'm gonna use my Nuvo tape runner to apply adhesive to the back and I'm gonna center that on my card base. Um, I'm using my tonic paper creaser to make sure that it's adhered really well and I have an uneven edge at the bottom that I don't like so I pulled out my trimmer just to cut off the bottom and then when I do that, I have to make sure I take a little bit off the back end too so that the front and back line up when I close it. Now I'm going to die cut the pieces that I need out of white cardstock and that piece that we watercolored earlier. And I'm gonna set them aside because now we're gonna add sparkle to the watercolored backgrounds. So I'm grabbing my Nuvo Aquaflow pen in glitter gloss and I'm using the brush tip of the pen inside of the cap to flick some of that sparkly fluid all over the cardstock. Now it wasn't coming out the way I wanted to so I squeezed a little drop of it inside of the lid and you can see how much more sparkle I'm getting now that I've done that. Now we're going to set this off to the side to dry and in the meantime we're going to die cut Mermaid Kisses and Starfish Wishes from a piece of black glossy cardstock with double sided adhesive on the back. So I cut that out and now I'm gonna use my poking tool to poke the negative pieces out of that and I'm being careful to leave the sentiment inside of the die. So don't pull the whole sentiment out, just remove the pieces from the negative space that you don't wanna have in there. Once that's done, I'm gonna show you how to line this up and get perfect placement with your sentiment. Before we do that, let's poke out the negative pieces from this larger die cut piece that we'd set aside earlier. And what I'm doing is I'm just taking the negative pieces and I've decided that I'm gonna leave these seashells solid, except for that one big piece on those conch shells. So after those are all out, we'll set that to the side and we're ready to remove the backing from our sentiment so that we can adhere it. The next thing you're gonna do is remove any pieces you may have missed the first time around and then stick it down onto your die cut just where you want it and press down to kind of get that adhesive to stick in place. I used my poking tool to help push down some extra places and to help separate that die cut and look at that perfect placement. So now that that's adhered, we can go ahead and use some foam dimensionals to start putting our card together and popping up different layers. Now I'm cutting these foam dimensionals apart so that I can place them around the back of my die cut piece, but I'm also using them to put pieces on the back of the shells so that I don't have pieces falling out once I put my card together. Look at the sparkle on that background, and here's how it looks with that die cut piece placed in the center. Now I'm going to put the foam dimensionals on the back of my sentiment piece and add that onto the center as well. Now that's it for putting the card together, but now we need to add some embellishments. So I've got my Nuvo Smooth Precision Pen and my Silver Rain sequins, which are gorgeous. They're so sparkly. And this is my favorite way to adhere sequins. This pen is like a gel pen, but it puts out glue. So it's so easy to be so precise and it doesn't flow like um, a, a glue dispenser that you squirt. So that fine tip helps you get the glue exactly where you want it and nowhere else. It's really easy to apply. So I'm adding my sequins on and I only wanted to add a couple. So I'm using my poking tool just to make sure that they're pressed down firmly before I move on to adding my dream drops. I am using Dream Drops and Indigo Eclipse and Fairy Wings today, and I am really excited about these Dream Drops, you guys, and the reason why is because they make perfect drops every single time. I'm so amazed by how easily you can get a perfect drop. Um, you don't have to shake the paper. You don't have to try and level them out afterwards. They're just perfect every single time that I've used them. I'm really impressed by them. So it's not just their beautiful, opalescent, dreamy look that I like, because I do love that, but I just also love how easy they are to use. So 
This is the finished card. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to both the Tonic YouTube channel as well as Card Bomb by Maria Willis. If you're interested in checking out any of the products that I've used today, there will be links to them on the blog and there is a link to the blog post in the comments below. Thanks again, you all. I'll see you back here real soon. Bye for now.